Chocolate Touch by Patrick Skeen Catling. Illustrations by Margot Apple. Chapter 5 John hung up his coat, got his notebook and pencil out of his locker, and sat down at his small table just in time for the second bell, when Mrs. Plimsoll walked silently into the classroom. As soon as she appeared in the doorway, all the chattering and scuffling stopped. The twenty boys and girls sat straight in their chairs and looked straight ahead at the clean blackboard. Good morning, children, Miss Plimsoll said. Good morning, Miss Plimsoll, the class answered respectively. Miss Plimsoll sat at her high desk, blinking her eyes as she surveyed the room. Then she opened a little drawer in her desk and pulled out a spectacles case, from which she took her reading glasses. She removed her long-distance glasses, put on her short-distance glasses, snapped shut the spectacles case, replaced it in the drawer, shut the drawer, tilted her head forward so that she could look over the glasses on her nose, and said, This morning, children, we are going to have an important test. There were some groans and a few ahs and ahs. Miss Plimsoll lifted up one of her hands, and silence was restored instantly. No complaining, please, she said sternly. This test will show me how well you have been learning your arithmetic this year. It will be a short one. I am going to write just four problems on the board. I shall expect you to solve them all swiftly and accurately, and to write your answers neatly. You will place your paper in front of you now. You will write your name at the top right-hand corner and then you will place your pencil beside your paper, sit back in your chair, and wait until I give the signal to begin work. Miss Plimsoll turned to the blackboard and began chalking up the test problems. Tests always made John nervous. Besides, his lips were feeling dry, and the taste of chocolate was strong in his mouth. He raised his hand. Yes, John, Miss Plimsoll asked. Please, May I go and get a drink of water, please, Miss Plimsoll? He asked in a small voice. Very well. Hurry back. We're going to start in a few minutes. John gratefully slipped out of the room and walked quickly down the quiet corridor to a water fountain. His tongue felt thick with chocolate. The cold water would be refreshing. He pressed his foot down on the fountain treadle and a stream of clear, ice-cold water splurted up from the silver nozzle in the white enamel basin. He lowered his head until the jet of water reached his lips. The cold water splashed delightfully against the outside of his mouth. He opened his lips. As soon as the water gushed in, it turned into ice-cold chocolate water, thin and sweet. Quickly stopping the flow, John looked with dismay at the shallow puddle that had formed and was now draining away in the basin of the fountain. He hurried to another fountain on the second floor of the building, but there the same thing happened. The clear, ice-cold water turned to liquid chocolate in his mouth. When John finally got back to his classroom, all the other pupils were bent over their tables, busily scratching away. Miss Plimsoll looked up from her book as John tiptoed in. She looked at the clock on the wall, looked back at him, and wagged her finger reprovingly. John began on the first of the four problems, but he was so worried about the chocolate water that he couldn't keep his mind on his work. By the time he was ready to start the fourth problem, the other boys and girls were already putting down their pencils and straightening up and smiling at each other. Two minutes to go, said Miss Plimsoll. Concentrating hard, John took the end of his pencil between his teeth and began to nibble it. It immediately turned to chocolate. Then he noticed an even more disturbing change. Although he had taken the pencil out of his mouth as soon as the first piece of chocolate had crumbled off, the pencil was continuing to change to chocolate. The chocolate was slowly but steadily moving down the pencil, replacing the wood and the lead inside, changing it into a chocolate pencil before John's very eyes. The magic, for John now knew that his power must be magic, 
was apparently getting stronger. By the time the whole pencil had changed from red, yellow, and black to dark brown, Miss Plimsoll was announcing that only a few seconds remained in which to write down the final answer. Just a minute, John pleaded. Shh, Miss Plimsoll cautioned him, holding a finger up to her mouth. Shh, chorused the slow workers, who were becoming almost as excited as John. But John felt worst of all. He felt sure that he could finish the problem and write down the correct answer, if only he had something to write with. But Miss Plimsoll, he begged in a loud whisper, my pencil's turned to chocolate. Hush, John, Miss Plimsoll said. I'll speak to you after the bell. John tried to write with his changed pencil, but the point was too soft, and he only succeeded in making a chocolate smear where he should have written 72. I like chocolate everywhere, but I do not like it in my home.